bright light. Well, folks, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if we could have been wrong going either way. I tell you, I was torn. But I do know what God laid on my heart all day. And then I know what Josh brought forth, so. If I missed it, I apologize. But I am discombobulated. God is awesome in this place, folks. And if you're not feeling him, you need to repent and get in his presence. God's in this house a whole different new way. A whole new way. Where am I at? Go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. I got about seven pages of notes. And I'm about up to my wife's standard at about 30 minutes to 45 minutes per page. So, you now know why I was torn. Amen? Um, I know I have a lot here. I know where it could break off. And to be honest with you, I want to deliver this the way God wants it, not the way I normally deliver it. Because how many knows when you are full of rebellion, you are the biggest Pharisee and the biggest critic, and you walk in the lack of love because you're guilt-ridden. Amen? I'll just let you figure that out for yourself. (laughs) Then those that start judging me, I'll call down fire. I'm feeling that Elijah spirit. (laughs) Okay, that went over your heads. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay, listen, this is going to be hard at first, so just buckle up, suck up, and just let it go, okay? Because we're getting to the good part. But first, you've got to understand the first part. It's the foundation, all right? Are you ready? Okay, good. I, some of you sounded even excited to get spanked. All right, here we go. That word, serve, right there, you cannot serve God and mammon. See, we look at that as, Serving God, reading our Bible, coming to church, doing what we want to do when we want to do it. Because that's serving. Because I can serve you if I want to or serve you if I don't want to. Or I don't have to serve you because it's my choice. But the problem is that word's not serve. That word is slave. And when you're a slave, you can't do what you want to do. You can only do what you're told to do. And the problem is, is we've got a gracie grace message coming through the church that you're the friend of God, and you can call him your homeboy, and you can do whatever you want, however you want it. You can have a cup of coffee. You can have a donut. You can come to church and act like you're saved, but you don't know the master. Mm, I feel this all over me. A slave has no choice. A slave's got a thing in his ear or a thing in his nose, and he's led around by a chain. Ain't no gospel you ever heard, is it? You're speaking foreign to us. We have no clue about what you say. You don't have a choice. He's either your Lord or he's not. He's either your master or he's not. He's either God or he's mammon. Somebody's your master. Don't know which one, but somebody's your master. 
I can't judge you. I can't tell you because some of you walk in, in, in love of the Lord and want Him to be your master, but you fight it all day long, and, and you're broken, and we love you for it, but you're still serving the wrong one. And you get mad at me because I tell you. And we're so dumb we don't know it. Because we have painted a picture of God that our grandmothers and the media and the social networks have told us what God is. And that is our picture. And we put it up on a pedestal. And that's what we're worshiping. And it is still an idol. Your opinion of God does not matter. What you think he is. If you think it's supposed to have abortion, if you think they're supposed to be gays, if you think he's okay with all that crap, that's your opinion. That's not the Word of God. And so your form that you have shaped is up on an idol, and you're worshiping your butt off, but you're worshiping mammon. Okay. All right. You don't believe me. So go to with me to Ephesians 4 1. God, I didn't want this to be hard. I didn't want. Look, this part, if you can get this part, you can have the other part. If you don't get this part, it don't matter. You don't get the other part anyway. <laughs> so it's like this you got to go through the obstacle course for the million dollars. You'd go on Fear Factor for $50,000 and eat something, something nasty, but you won't press through for God. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have called. I don't like that one. Go back. Give that to me in the New Living. Let's see what that says. Therefore, I, this is the one I want, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. Oh, no, I'd rather be a servant and a master and a prisoner to the hook me up. Whatever your hook me up is. Porno, food, alcohol, sex, opinion, vanity. We're so vain, it is ridiculous. Everything we do, we can't leave the house without looking in the mirror. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Don't let me tell you this. Let, let, me, let me just share with you. God's wrecked my world, if you haven't figured it out yet. And um, I, I've, I've been going through this. Because I had my little idols up there. I got to do this, and I, I, I'm allowed to do this because I have this, and that's okay for this, and that's okay for that. So I, 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 we're talking to everybody today. I'm not condemning you. We're, uh, this is for all of us. We got to become his slave again. Amen. Amen. We, we got to, if he says stay up all night, stay up all night. If he says go, we go. If he says don't, we don't. If he says do, we do. Amen. We got to get to the point, stop doing for ourselves and doing for the Lord. First Corinthians 6, 19 says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Give that to me in King James. See, I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to prepare you. This is why you're frustrated. This is why you're irritated, and this is why you're going through life. I don't care. You religious folks can get, just get over it. You're pissed off. You're mad as hell or you're depressed as hell. One of the two, because you won't make him master. I'm preaching of what I know, and I'm the pastor. If I'm jacked up, just imagine how bad you're jacked up. <laughs> what? No, you... Somebody already get her the handbook. Know ye not that your body is the temple? Give me that King James. There we go. It is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You, are, you were bought with a price. 
You were bought with a price. You have no choice. There's no such thing as pro-choice. You have no choice. Because if you know the Father, you're not going to kill a baby. So, I've laid the foundation. You're not your own. He's your master. He's your Lord. You're his slave. Hook up to a chain and get in line. Oh, no, I want to come to church. I want to feel that, that music that I like, that one song that just makes me feel good. <laughs> I just feel so good about myself when I leave. And then I go home and I do what I always do, and then I feel like crap again. Let me just give you a speck of my life. I come up here and preach anointed word and go home and go through the same thing. Because I'll let him chain me here, but I'll let this one chain my legs too. Go, Lord. What do you want? We can't serve two masters, folks. He is our Lord, our master, and we are to be a slave to him. I know that's not popular. See, this is the thing. We're our own person. See, we've grown up in America thinking we're our own. We're told to be successful. We're told to make our own choices. We're told not to fall in line. We're taught to be independent. We're taught to do what we want to do. Amen? So it's hard for us to come across with a message like this because it's so foreign to us. We, uh, women in America can't even let their husband tell them what to do on a good thing anymore. Right. Who in the hell does he think he is? And you, you, he's sitting there trying to do something good for her. Because we're so full of you can't tell me what to do. Oh, heck no, I ain't going to church and pastor going to tell me what to do. I know how they, they, well, they waste their money, they do whatever they want to do. Hey, ain't no way he's going to tell me, and ain't no way I'm going to give him my money. Ain't no way I'm going to give him my time. Ain't no way I'm going to put my haul in there. There's no way, there's no way, there's no way. I'm my own person. I ain't called all that. I got my own life. I got my career. I got what I want to do. I got my softball. I got my baseball. I got my kids' ball. I got all these other things that are important to what I want to do, and that's all that matters. I, got, I went to school for four years to do this career. I've invested. My family comes first. You're reading the wrong Bible. Jesus comes first. I know I'm messing some of you up, and some of, them, of you I'm ticking off, but I love you anyway. Because, see, I walked this out. Then he showed it to me in Scripture. Try that. At least you're getting the Scripture, and you can base it off of that. I'm getting beat up, don't know, don't know what's going on. All he's doing is ripping everything out of me and making me feel like this big. Somebody get her the handbook. <laughs> no one's to tell us what to do. God made us friends. He said that we were his friend. He said it better yet. He said we are his child. So I can be like my spoiled brat child I, that I'm raising, and I can be a spoiled brat too. Well, I know. You should have been with me yesterday. We are not our own. He tells us we can't be a friend until we are a slave. Therefore, glorify God. Make God apparent in your body and your spirit. When this says bring glory to God, what you're doing is you're making God apparent in who you are. 
what that does is you're obedient, and when you're obedient, then you're bringing glory to God. You're making God apparent to everybody that's around you. And you're saying, well, why are you throwing that in right now? Because if you make him your master and you are his slave, then you will be obedient. And when you're obedient, then he will, will bring glory to God and you will get people saved around you. Because the point of this message is not to beat you up about being a slave. Because the point of this message is to get out of these walls. And I'm going to get there in a second. But the thing is, is that you've got to make him master first. You gotta make him master and understand the position you're in. You're his slave. You're to do whatever he says to do. Verse 24 again, 624, Matthew 624. We can't serve two masters. It says, one we will hate, that word is misio, and it means to love less. One we will love less, and the other one is agape, to love in a social moral sense, a preference for an idea of affectionate reverence prompt obedience so what he's saying is you can't serve or you can't be slave to two masters because you're going to love one less and you're going to have affection to one or the other amen okay or else he will hold to the one and despise the other that word to hold is to hold oneself opposite to, adhere to, cleave to. And despise is to think against and esteem, think little or nothing of. So either you're going to adhere to one and think little of the other. You're still thinking of him, and that's the problem. See, you think it's either or. See, it's not. Loving and not loving, it's loving and loving less. And so, because we love less, we think we're okay. Did he go out in the spirit or did he just fall off the chair? <laughs> All right. I told you I was preaching good today, brother. We can't serve. <laughs> I preach them right off the seats. Woo! Jesus. All right. All right. So it's not love, love one, love not the other. It's love one more and love one less. See, we can't serve two masters, God or mammon. That word God is the supreme divinity, the supreme authority. You can't love the supreme authority, or you can't be slave to the supreme, supreme authority and mammon. Now look, look, then when we see mammon, everybody looks up and they find wealth, don't they? They think riches, they think money. But the root of this word means confidence. It means wealth, avarice, which is excessive, insatiable desire for wealth or gain. And that's key. Because we look at this scripture and we think you can't serve God or money. And we beat people up about loving money. Hey, no, we're nothing wrong with having money. The problem is, is the position of the money. And it's not just about money. It's about what you have confidence in and what you're gaining in. Now, I'm fixing to mess you up right here. All right, listen. We can't serve two masters, God or mammon. What, what is riches to us? Not always money, but what brings us pleasure. Your job. Going up the ladder, that's getting gain. It's not all about the money. It's about the position. It's about somebody answering to you and you telling somebody what to do. Because we all want the title. Don't tell me, I don't want the title, just give me the job. Every time someone says that to me, I say, I don't trust you. You do it in your marriage. How much your spouse loves you, gives to you, does for you, shows for you, how well they present in, in public brings you gain. How well your kids do in sports, how well they do in school, how well they do whatever brings you gain. 
see, we think taking God's name in vain is GD. That's the furthest thing from the truth. Taking God's name is vain, in vain is taking his authority and putting your vanity to it. Now, saying GD is that, but that, that we think that's the only thing. No. You're saying, well, wait a minute. You're fixing to say we can't do nothing but come to church. And I don't like that because I'm vain and I want to do my way. Just hang on. So God is saying we can't be slave to him and what we trust in or what we have confidence in. What do you have confidence in? Your social softball club that gets you friendship, makes you feel better about yourself? What, what, what is it that you trust in? What is it that you put confidence in? Your abilities? Your career? How much money you got in the bank? The, dr the car you drive, the house you have? What, what is it that you have confidence in? Because it's not just mammon. It's what you trust in. You can't serve or be slave to that and be slave to God. You can't be slave to God and be slave to that. So you've got to make God your master. You've got to serve him. You've got to lay down your life and say, you are the king. You are the king, you are the Lord, and this is your domain. Whatever I do is your domain. You have rule in my life. So which are we slave to? Okay, to and seriously, I, I'm, I'm going to say this one, once again. Today is not about condemnation. Though my cry is that this will bring repentance, we will have, uh, or we have got to realize what we are serving, we must awaken. Go to Ephesians 5.14 for me. What I just talked about is for us to wake up. What I just talked about is for us to wake up. What are we serving? What is our master? Wherefore we say, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. The point to this message is preaching, delivering, and presenting the kingdom of God. Go back to verse 21. Matthew 6, 21. Come on, hurry up. Y'all don't get distracted by the little girl. Satan's trying to prevent that family from getting here. Y'all, let's pray right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for peace to Mama. We've asked for peace to Daddy. We ask for peace to the children, Father God. We ask for a connection. We ask for a loosening. And we thank you, Father God, that you're on the throne and Satan won't win. And you are the, the, the healer and you are the deliverer. And you're the one that brings peace that passes all our understanding. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. All right. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. See, if you have one source, your whole body will be full of light. Go to verse 23. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If thy eye looks on the things that it shouldn't be, if it's turned away. See, anything that puts God put second is evil. But all things are good. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? If you are putting something before God, how great is the darkness in you? That's the thing we don't know because we're loving less, so we're still loving, so we're okay. Right? We're okay. You're, don't, don't condemn me, Pastor. I'm good. I just got over one thing. I'm trying to get on the other. Yes, you are, and keep going. But you got to put it in position. You start justifying your sin, you've lost. When you're broken over it and every time you do it, it breaks you, you're on the right track. But if you can do it and justify it, you're in trouble. 
Verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either will hate the other. Blah, blah, blah. We already said that. Come on. No, let's just read it. Don't. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Now, this is key here, because we just think about food and drink. Because he said food and drink and clothes, that's all we think about. So if I don't think about food and I don't think about drink and I don't think about clothes, then I, I am putting God first. Bull doo-doo. <laughs> Therefore I say and you, take no thought for it. Because you're thinking about what other people are thinking. You're thinking about the career. You're thinking about the boat. You're thinking about the car. You're thinking about the golf clubs. You're thinking about the softball team. You're thinking about whatever. Your kid getting uh, 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 on the sports team. Your kid making uh, state finals. You're thinking about those things. You're saying, all right, you're pushing the line of legalism, and I ain't liking it. Suck it up. <laughs> it is legalism. He's your master, you're his slave, and you do what he tells you to do. The problem is, is you don't understand that's freedom. That's what we don't understand. When those chains come on, that's freedom. And we have no concept of that because we put chains, we can't do what we're supposed to want to do, so then we think we're locked up. And so we do everything to break through thinking that we're moving for what God wants and we're moving against what he wants. I kind of, never mind, I'll get in trouble if I say that. I've already said five things today that I'm going to get emails on. What, who he shall eat? Don't bother sending them. Don't bother saying it. It don't bother. It don't bother. It don't, it don't bother me. I'm under the anointing. I know what God wants to say. I know what he wants. Keep it to yourself. What you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor put for your body what you shall put on. It's not the life more than the meat and the body than the raiment. Go to the next verse. Go take no thought for your life. That's the what, Go back to that verse. Go back to that verse. 25. See, we get stuck on the food because we are fat. And we're stuck on the drink because we're luscious. And we're stuck on the, on, the, on the body because we're vain. But the thing is, take no thought for your life. That speaks to humble slavery. We wipe that out. So we look at our fatness, our lushness, and our vanity, and we take no thought. Go to the next verse. That one was free. That one even in the notes. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more than they? Watching TV program, televangelist. Send in $100, and I'll send you a napkin and an oil and a prophecy, and I'll make everything right. Go back to the, take no thought. Go back to the, 25. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than ra raiment. I don't know why I went there. Go on. I lost it. <laughs> Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not. Oh, that's what it is. They sow not. See, we, we're doing all kinds of sowing, expecting a harvest. We're going to sow some money here. We're going to give to this person here. We're going to so God will do what we want him to do. <laughs> so you're manipulating and paying off God. You're planting a seed to get God to give you what you want. See, the problem is that works, but it's in the right motive. If you do it to get it, you have done lost it. But if you do it because God told you to, you'll reap it. See, that's Bible, and the prosperity preachers won't tell you that because you won't send them in $100. I don't care if you send me in $100. I don't care if I'm ever rich. I want to be in the will of God. And when I stand before him, I want to say that I preached everything that I knew and did it the best I could instead of manipulating somebody for their money. But that, doesn't, that does not take you away from giving. If you didn't come here today with an offering, you're in sin. Oh, you didn't like that one. You didn't like that one because I got on to you. Yeah, I, when I was getting on the prosperity preacher, you were all with me. Where did you go? I turned around and you were gone. I thought we were together.
I'm full of something today. I hope it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Are you not much better? <laughs> Woo! Goodness gracious. Man, when you've been through hell, heaven's nice, brother. Behold the fowls of... <laughs> that'll be a, that'll preach right there. I did not sleep a wink last night. Nothing. Not till 6 o'clock this morning, till 8.30. Really? I'm being obedient now. <laughs> See, that's what messes us up. We're obedient, and he makes us go harder. And then we're like, what are you doing? I gave you my little 10%. Come on. He's saying, buck up. My son gave his whole life. <laughs> Sit down and shut up. And if you want to be my son, too, then give yours, too. Verse 27. I'm tearing up Dan, son. Yeah, brother. You ought to hear him when I come on. Dad, you tore it up. Dad, you tore it up. We went to see Damon, and he said, he came away from Damon, and he said, my dad can preach, but whoo, Damon, man, that man can preach. Which of you, if you haven't heard Damon Thompson, you need to hear him because he's ten times better than me. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a statue? Yep. Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. Verse 29. I'm getting tired. Come on, let's wrap this up. <laughs> and I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not tarry, or was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so close, see, I said something about not no sleep, and immediately not being tired came to me. Wow. Just, just let you help, just helping you, just helping you. Don't acknowledge it. Don't acknowledge it that you're Jones, and don't acknowledge it that you want to click on on the porno site. Don't acknowledge that you got to put away the food. Don't acknowledge the sin. Acknowledge the glory. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall ye not much more clothe ye, o, you of, o ye of little faith? Come on, we're getting to the best part right here. Come on. And therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? Wipe all the... Wait, go, go, go back. I didn't say go. Therefore, take no thought. Therefore, take no thought. Your thinking is stinking. Take no thought. See, when you're taking thought, then you're thinking of what your idea, what your experience is. When you don't think and you just produce the word, then you have it in you and it's coming out, and therefore you don't have to worry about it. I know that's harder than, that's, that's a nice little saying. That's a, it's a lot harder to do. Because it, that means you don't have, you can't go to the bar, you can't go uh, with your friends and socialize all the time, you can't do all those things. You've got to spend some time in the word alone by yourself, and we hate to be alone. We hate, uh, we hate being alone so bad that now we have taken, where's that, where's that? Give me yours. We've taken this everywhere we go. We're on the pot texting somebody. You're taking a crap and you're talking to somebody. That's nasty. That is nasty, nasty, nasty. Hush. Don't throw me under the bus, woman. together woman what are you doing therefore take no thought saying well, okay next verse this is where we're getting to ain't it fun to have fun in the whole in the house of god yeah. all right and you're getting your butt tore up right now and you're laughing <laughs> see that's that's when you know it's god well god's taking over what it is because when you're getting your butt tore up and you get all offended that's your flesh for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. That's the foreign nations, those that don't know God. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Okay? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, i got to finish it.
because this is the best part. I've brought you to the best part. This is the marching orders, okay? I've tore you up and made you laugh, but this is the deal. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom is the king's domain, right? The king's domain is the will of God, right? The desire of God, the rulership of God. If you've been to Wednesday night services or if you listen to Pastor Nett, and if you haven't, if you're not coming on Wednesday night, shame on you. God's not your master. If you only come on Sunday, God's not your master. He's your friend right now. Make him your master, and then I'll see you on Wednesday night, and then you'll see deliverance, and you'll see the things that you're seeking God for. Until then, oh, I know, I just ticked off half of you. I love you. It's all right, you'll be mad at me for a little bit, but God will deal with you. God will touch you. I know he will. See, the king's domain is the will of God, the desire of God. It's the rulership of God. Now, that righteousness is the virtue or the quality or the state of one who is keeping the commands of God. It's the one that is approved of God. When you say the righteousness of God, what you're saying is the right standing with God. When you're in the right standing with God, it's mean you're doing what God says. Okay? You're in right standing. It's not about your salvation. It's not about, uh, it's not about um, uh, you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because, see, right standing, you can be saved and be out of right standing with God. Because you're not doing the commands of God. And God is wooing you, trying to get you, because he's trying to get you to have victory in every area of your life. But some of us only want victory in our wives, in, in, in our marriages. We don't want victory in our, in our money because then we will be told what to do with our money. We don't want victory in our hobbies because then we'll t- be told how much time we can spend on our hobbies. Right? So, so if the kingdom of God is the will of God, and righteousness is the approval of God, who is the king? Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is the king. It is Jesus we should be seeking. In all we do, we should seek the will of God. Jesus. Jesus, the word of God, is the will of God. See, what he wants is the will. What the Bible says, which is the word of God, which is Jesus, John 1, 1 tells us that, is the will of God. That's the kingdom of God. When he says the kingdom of God has come, Jesus had come. Now, Jesus manifests not only in that body that was there, but also in his disciples because his disciples was part of the body. And so when the kingdom comes is when you're operating in the word, in the will, and when you're doing what God says. So, the things that we should be seeking is his will. Y'all quit drinking so much water, you don't have to pee so much. I had to get him. Okay, listen, I know I put work before families in this, but that's what hit me first, and I started to go back in order, but I wrote it, and then I went more than one page or more in, into the other page with the family, so I'm going to do work first. So don't get all, oh, he puts work first. Shut up. In our prep for work, we should be prepping for the kingdom. When we go to work, we should be go to take dominion, to invoke the kingdom, get them saved, healed, delivered. You're not going there for a promotion or career. See, this is the thing. We're getting all beautified so we can make that person over there look at us when we're getting ready for work. Come on, I've done it. I've been married, and there's been a good-looking woman at work, and I wanted to look sharp for her because she always told me I look good. Oh, snap. Y'all don't like that one, did you? Okay. I've also gone to work trying to please a boss because I wanted to get a promotion to get more money. Okay, how many's done that one? Don't raise your hand. Okay, I've also gone to work because I liked who I was hanging out with. Because it, it appeased my manhood. I got ready every morning. Bill was on time trying to please man and tries to, tries to please myself. Y'all all look at me like a cow looking at a new gate. <laughs> you're like, where are you trying to lead us? Because we don't know what you're saying. Sorry. Hush. Sorry. Okay, I, I, I'll tell them all and then, then we'll break, we'll go back. Our hot homes... 
wife with a husband who isn't saved, children, husband, family, get-togethers. You're not raising a kid to heal your heart from a lack of love your parents didn't give you, to bring about accomplishments so you can live through their life. Your pathetic life that you had as a child, and then you wind up making them miserable because you try to put them on a pedestal to become that athlete. They got the talent of a second grader, and you're trying to put them up there as an all-star. You, you try to please everything the man wants in your, in your relationship. You try to please everything that the woman wants. You try to please the children. You try, you try, to, you try to please every member in the family. You don't want to upset mom. You don't want to upset dad. You don't want to upset sister. You, don't, you, every, I, I, you got to get together because you just love family. You say, what's wrong with that? Just hang on. Just hang on. We train our kids to eat, clean up, do a sport, handle social problems, not have sex, to have sex in some houses, be somebody, be important. How many are training them and equipping them for the kingdom? You send them to school for eight hours a day, learning secular ideas, don't spend no time with them at home, what are you training them to be? All right, let's get on activities. Your activities. And those that saw the bad movie, when you see activities, I can't help but think of Will Ferrell when I think of activities, but you shouldn't have watched that movie. You're a sinner. Your activities. How many is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the darn time? Driving down the road. You cannot drive down the road without somebody in it with a cell phone in their hand right now. I don't care how old they are. Always got something going on. Our activities. My, I, I, my wife threw me on the bus. I'm going to throw her on the bus. Always checking out Facebook. Scrolling through that iPad iPhone, music. How many's got a, always got music on? Sports, always playing sports, always got a hobby. Always going fishing, going hunting, uh, playing golf. Social events, always move, going out. Got to go to the bar, got to go have f- fun, got to go socialize, got to go to the movies, got to go to the, fir- the, the next Twilight series, got to go to the next uh, Lord, uh, Lord of the Rings, the next whatever garbage is coming out. Got to go, got to go, got to go. Got to go have a beer, got to go have a glass of wine, got to go this, got to go that, go to that. <laughs> got to do, got to do, got to do. The problem is, if he's Lord and King, what are we pursuing? This is the thing. This is the point. This is the summation. How many met? God, I was wordy. Chatty Kathy. Let's sum it up. Is there anything wrong with family? Is there anything wrong with sports activities? Is there anything wrong with ha- hobbies? Is there anything wrong with any of it? No. That's not what I'm preaching. If that's what you're thinking, you're missing the boat. The problem is, is who we've made s- our, our master. Because he said, seek ye first the will of God, the kingdom, and his righteousness, and his approval. So seek ye first his will, and his approval. And all these things will be added unto you. And see, uh, here again, go back to that scripture for me. We think of our fatness, our vanity, and all that when we think all these things will be added. So we think we'll get the new clothes, we'll get the nail, we'll get the hair, we'll get the whatever, whatever our one is. Hunting, fishing, We think we'll get that if we will seek God. And we think seeking God is coming here and listen to me scream and act stupid. And if this is the only seeking of God that you're seeking, you're seeking the wrong God. So, now, this is the punchline. If I'm seeking the will of God and the approval of God, 
then all of these things will be added unto me. So if I'm on the sports team and I'm seeking the will of God, I'm not trying to impress the coach. I'm trying to find out who God sent me there to get saved. If I am doing the will of God, I'm not seeking for the promotion. I'm seeking to who needs deliverance, who needs to be set free from depression. How many knows that if you go to an office, you're going to have 20 people in there that are on an, a Xanax, on some type of depressed uh, 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 drug? And, 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 and let me tell you something to this. Vicodin is from the devil. And I bet you, I bet you 50 people in here are on it. Oh, I just take it for this, I just take it for that. It will eat you, and it will get you eventually. They are doing it to us. They're feeding us the crap in our food, and then they are giving us aches and pain medicine to cover it, putting the cycle to take all your thing. And if you will put God as your master, you will not serve mammon. Don't get me wrong, I'm not judging. My legs were hurting like heck all the time. Back hurt, I understand. Not trying to condemn. I'm trying to tell you who's your master. Because he said, if you will serve only one master, the master, God, all these things will be added unto you. So, if I go with the intention of what God's will is in that office, what is God's will in my family? See, it may be skip the reunion. It may be tick off dad. It may be tick off mom. It may beat the living hell out of your child. Oh, that messes some of you up. Some of them, they need to be beat. If you don't believe me, ask somebody that's taking care of your kid. We got to get them off the pedestal. Okay. You say, well, don't always, yeah, you're supposed to love them. Love, beating, taking a belt is loving them. If you ain't beating your child, you are messing up. You don't know the word of God. And you're saying, oh, don't get all messed up because I said beat. I ain't talking about abusing. There's a difference. The problem is, is we're spanking no, you need to beat the hell out of them. I didn't say abuse them. And see, that's, a, that's old school language. That's not the politically correct language of today. And I know that messes a lot of you politically correct people up, and I'm sorry. But if, we, if you're okay with who you are, why do you want to change the way your parents raised you? Our best days got us here, and now we're trying to throw it in the garbage. God, trusting in God got us to the, the prosperity you are, we are now, and now we're trying to throw it out of the window. And look where it's getting us. But see, the thing is, is this is the thing. Loving your child. And, and see, there's some of us that beat our kids and have no time at all with our kids. See, you've got to hear the whole story. You've got to hear the balance. You watch TV programs for four hours and you spend no time with your child. But you'll beat the hell out of him. And see, the thing is, is if you will serve the master, all that will be added to you. If you'll serve the master, your marriage will be taking care of yourself. Men, if you'll serve the master, she'll take care of you in the bedroom. Women, if you'll serve the master, he'll, he'll, he'll romance you to death. See, the thing is, is who is your master? The results you're getting is the evidence of who your master is. I know that's harsh. And let me tell you something. Serving the master sometimes will take you to the cross and cause you to be killed. And that messes up everything that I just said. But if I'm serving the master, I'm going to die. And I'm going to suffer pain. But someone's going to be saved. 
Someone's going to be saved. Someone's going to be saved. Someone's going to be changed. So you have to spend four hours with someone that's, no, 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 no. Come on, you've dealt with those persons. They got issues upon issue, and you tell them what to do, and they won't do it. They go home, and they don't do it. You give them the word of God, and they time and time and time again. Let me tell you something. Go home and look in the mirror. Someone did that with your butt. Amen? See, it's not about you can't have hobbies. It's not about getting rid of our wives, though I know some of you want to. It's not about getting rid of your children, though some of you need to. I'm teasing. Come on. You bring them to me. Don't. And let me tell you this. Quit looking at other kids. This is, a, this, is, this is bunny trail. But quit looking at other kids. Quit judging how bad other kids are. When you're not around, your kids are just as hellion as you are. It's the truth. Mine, I, they were afraid to tell me he was acting up back there. I said, what are y'all doing? I'll beat him. <laughs> if he ain't listen to you, you beat him. See, so y'all can't handle that. Oh, you better not touch my kid. You have my permission. If he's acting up and not doing what he's supposed to do, you knock the crap out of him. But let me tell you something. If you're going to step into that arena, you better spend some time with him. You better lay down your life for him. I don't know why I'm on that subject so much tonight. I want it free. What? I know. <laughs> He's beating my butt. That's for sure. I needed it. But this is the thing, folks. All my yelling, all my screaming, all my funny. It's not about stop what you're doing. This is the key. Stop doing it for the reasons why you're doing it. And some of the stuff you'll stop doing altogether. Because once you start doing it for the king, you'll only do what brings satisfaction. And those things that you're doing not for the king, they won't bring satisfaction anymore. They won't bring that temporary junky fix. Amen? They won't. So, what hobby do you have that you're seeking the will of yourself and not God? What marriage, what part of your marriage are you seeking mammon instead of God? What part of raising your children are you seeking mammon instead of God? What part of your career are you seeking mammon instead of God? What part of your ministry are you seeking mammon instead of God? What part of any relationship, any friendship, are you seeking mammon instead of God? What part of any hobby, any activity, Only you can answer that. Because some of you can't play golf. Some of you can. Some of you can't go to certain areas. Some of you can. Some of you need to make changes in your marriage. Some of you need to make changes in your training up your ch children. Some of you need to make changes in your job. This is not about quitting everything and becoming a monk. This is about seeking you first the kingdom of God. Seek you first the kingdom of God, your marriage becomes the will of God and approved of God. Your children become approved of God and the will of God. Your career, your ministry, your bank account. Just think if you went to everything you went sent by God instead of on an accident. We're wanting... Those, those that, are with, that, that are running with me and right below me, and I don't mean that, but running with me and, 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 and wanting to see the miracles of God. We're wanting it, and we keep wanting it in here, but it's going to be out there. Can you imagine if you walked in and someone had cancer and you laid hands on them in the office and it fell off? Can you imagine the revival that would happen in McLean Company if this had this big old tumor 
and everybody was grossed out because it was oozing, and you walked up there and touched it, and everybody freaked out because it was going to get on you, and it dropped off. But how are you going to do that when you're thinking about Miss Thang and trying to look good for her? And how are you going to do that when you're trying to please him to get up the ladder? You're seeking the wrong things. But if you seek the will of God and the approval of God, all these things have you. Let me tell you something. You lay hands on somebody and cancer falls off, I guarantee you, you're going to get promoted. I guarantee you. Because your boss is going to be afraid of you. You call down the fire. Hey, I'm serious. What do you think happened with Daniel and Elijah? They were afraid of them. Why? Because God was with them. You start setting people free, opening their ears, and fixing their hurts and pains, and getting them to throw away their Vicodin, the boss is going to promote you because he's going to be scared of you. And if he doesn't, he's going to fire you. Woo, don't want to hear that one. But let me tell you something. Even if you get fired, double for your trouble, brother. Double for your trouble. Let's all stand. Holy moly. I know that was long. But I had to do it all. I didn't want to do it in two parts. If y'all had to come back for the second good part, y'all wouldn't have, you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have missed it. Half of you wouldn't have been here anyway. He made me he, he made me mad. Come on, praise and worship. I think we need to have an altar call. One song. No, I'll leave it there. One song. Lights down. We had fun today. God let the God let the word come forth with a little medicine of laughter. But that doesn't take away the seriousness of what we've talked about today. Who's your Lord and who's your master? Be honest. Who is your Lord and who is your master? Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads. Let's don't worry about baptism. It's cold, but we only got, how many we got baptized? Isabel? Who else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. They're kids. They can handle the cold. They'll be all right. Come on. All right, everybody, every head bowed, every eye closed. Serious, we're going to shift gears right here. And, 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 and I, know that, I know that I made light of a lot of stuff today. And I know I came harsh on some other stuff. But I want you to know my heart. I'm not trying to condemn you. I went through a battle of hell for the last 10 days, and this rocked my world. You know, and, and I'm all fired up right now, and I, I'll go through another battle, and God will pull another layer. And I, and I may go through a, a valley again. But that's the goodness of God, folks. That's his grace and his mercy. And he loves you. And he knows where you're at. But when he comes to you with something that he is expressing to you and trying to show you, don't be like me and hard-headed. Don't fight it for two years. Don't become so miserable with what God's doing in your life that everybody around you can't stand to be around you anymore. Repent and let God change you. So this morning I want to ask you, and I, I don't want anybody coming up here praying. I don't want any prophesying. We're going to go through this song. Give me something soft and low and just sing slow and, and low. And and I just ask you to, to make a statement to God and to the people around you. I, I've made something else my Lord and my Master and I don't want to do that anymore. And come to this altar and just say, Lord, now if you break down, I'm not looking for, I'm not looking for tears. I don't, I, it doesn't even matter if you come up here. What I want to see is the fruit of repentance. What I want to see is the change. That's what I'm after as pastor. That's what Jesus is after. We've said so many times this and that, and we've, we've wanted to mean it. This time mean it. This time do it. So we're going to go through this song. You're going to have the opportunity to come to this altar, make a vow, make a declaration to the Lord, let God touch you, and then I'm going to pray. No, I'll just pray right now. Lord, I pray that whatever they come to you with, that, Father, they would have the strength 
I ask that you anoint them and empower them and the strength in their inner man to make that vow, to make that commitment, but also to do it, Father, to walk it out. The Holy Spirit comes to lead us into all truth. So Holy Spirit, come and lead them into this truth. Come on. This altar is open. Come on. I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul and I can't. One person, contain, really? And I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. That I can't control. I want more of you. Come on, thank you, Lord. I want more of you. It's not about condemnation, it's about freedom. Be honest with yourself this morning. Take that deep, hard look in the mirror. Thank you, Lord. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Oh, Father, yes. Yes, Father, yes. in the house make this your cry make this your cry that he'll set a fire down in your soul the Lord is preparing a way for his fire to burn revival is coming to the city of temple Awakening.
Cover me with oil, set me on fire. I wanna burn for you. I wanna burn. So cover me with oil, set me on fire. I wanna burn for you. on fire I want to burn for you I want to burn cover me with oil set me on fire Guys, guys, listen to me. Listen to me. You can't negotiate. God does not negotiate. You can't keep it. There's many of you in here today, right now, that you're saying yes in every area except the one thing that he's wanting to deal with. And you're wanting to hold on to it. You're screaming and you're kicking and you're fighting everything inside of you to hold on to that thing. And that thing is the one thing that's going to be the domino that sets everything else in. That's the one thing that has the stronghold. That's the one thing that's above. See, there's some other things that Jesus is still above. You're doing and you're in sin, but Jesus is still above. But that one thing is the one thing that's above him. That's the one thing that you're serving more than him. Amen? And when that goes, the rest of them will go. The, the, the Lord says specifically addictions. Specifically addictions. Come on. Come on. He dealt with them Wednesday night. He wants to deal with it again. Food, drugs, alcohol, any addiction. Sex, pornographic sites. What is it? Come on. Come on. Deal with it right now. Nobody's going to be a shit. Nobody. I look, I put a needle in my arm. I've looked at pornographic sites. I've done it all. I don't condemn you. Come on. God will deliver you. I promise you. I promise you. But you cannot get delivered holding on to what you want to be delivered from. You got to let it go. Come on. Bring it back up. Set me on. Uh, put, put oil on me and set me on fire. That's what we need right there. We need God to burn it right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. If it's not you, intercede. Because there's many people in here that God's talking to. Come on, be patient. This is what it's all about. This is where God's at. This is where God's moving. Come on. Don't negotiate anymore. Stop negotiating. Set me on fire. Tell him to set me on fire. Set me on fire. If you're up here for addiction, I want you to step closer to the altar. Set me on fire. If you're up here for addiction, step closer to this altar. Set me on fire. Come on. Oh, Come on. Set me on fire. Hold on. Hey, 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 hey. Set me oh, no, 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 on fire. No, 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 no. Dear Heavenly Father, you did it for me. Do it for her, Father God. You did it for me. Do it for set her. Break it right fire. now in Jesus' name. Break set it right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. She's free. She's free. In Jesus' name. Let it go, baby. Let it go. Let it go, baby. Let it go. 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 Come on. Let it go. Come on. Purge it. Purge it. Purge her, Lord. Cleanse her with your fire. Cleanse her with your fire, Lord. Cleanse her with your fire. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Set him free, Lord. Set him free. Give him the want to. Your word says that you work in us in the will. The will to want to and the power to. Work it in the will, Father. Work it in the will. Thank you, Jesus. Set him free. 
set her free. Set her free. Set her free, Lord. Deliver her right now. Deliver right now. You can do it, baby. He said yes. He said yes. He said yes. Set me on fire. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Witchcraft. Go. Pharmakia, go. Pharmakia, go. Pharmakia, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give her the authority of Jesus Christ. Cut the authority of the enemy. Thank you, Jesus. Set her free. Declare healing. You shall be the woman of God I've called you to be. You shall walk in the anointing. You shall walk in the power. You shall be who I've called you to be. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Set her free, Lord. Set her free. Set her free, Lord. Set her free, Lord. Come, come, come out. Come out. Come out. Set me on fire, oh yes. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. Oh, set me on fire. Come down, hold, come, come down, come down, come down, go down. Hey, hey, let, God just said, you're looking for complete set free, and some, some will. But the thing is, is the Lord delivered them out of Egypt, and when he delivered them out, they went directly into this place where they were boxed in. And we are wanting set free, completely deliverance, and no withdrawals, no struggle, no fight. Let me tell you something. That is a lie. You're still going to have to go through the struggle. You're still going to have to say no. You're still going to have to fight through it. But let me tell you something. He will deliver you. And every time you come to the sea and you have to have it parted, he's going to say, stretch forth their staff and watch me move. Every time with the withdrawal, with the addiction, with whatever comes at you, he will deliver you. He will deliver you. Come on. Come on. Faith. faith. Come on. Pray for faith. Faith. Faith casts out fear. Love casts out all fear. And when fear goes, faith comes in. And when faith rises up, we walk on water. Come on. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Here we go. Bring it back up. Come on. Bring it back up. Faith. Come on, everybody sing. The more that you sing and join in unity, go get them kids out of there and bring them in here. Go get them kids and get them out of here. Come on. The more that you sing in unity, the more power you bring to these people. Come on. Come on, this is what this is about. People are getting set free right here. Come on. They're making a declaration. I'm leaving. I'm leaving Egypt. I'm leaving bondage. I'm leaving bondage. Come on. Come on. I want more of you, come on. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more, yes. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. Oh, how loud can we get for Jesus? Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want. Tell him again, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't 
change and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. Declare it over your family. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Find your kids. Come on. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you.
soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I Raise your voice. Set a fire down in my declaration. And I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain. And I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Oh, sing it out louder. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. Of you. Last one, everything you got. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Come on, give him a hand clap. Tell him he's worthy. Amen. Amen. Now listen, that cry was that you would be set on fire and that he would give you more of himself. The thing is, is that God is not in just inside the walls. He's where you're at. He's in your home. He's in your office. He's in your schools. He's where you go. So if you really want more of him, then you need to experience all of him in those areas. So now today you were spoken and told that if you will make him the Lord and master, that he will give you all things added unto you. So if you will make him Lord and master in your home, in your office, and in your work, you'll have more of him. You'll have the will of him, and people will get saved, delivered, and set free, and the fire will begin to burn. It will begin to burn on you. It will begin to burn on everybody around you. It will be a wildfire, but you are the only one that can quench it. So don't quench the fire. Go home and feed the fire. Go home and build the fire. Go home and fan the flame with all that you got and all that you are. Amen? Amen? Raise up your hands. Dear Heavenly Father, come on. Dear Heavenly Father, come on. All right. Are y'all a little slow? Did you ride the little bus? Come on. Watch me. Come with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I promise, I promise to, to never, never quench, quench the, fire the fire that started, that started in, me in me right now. Right now. I'm going to fan it. I'm going to allow it to burn. And I'm going to spread it, I'm gonna spread it wherever it. I go. So when I get up in the morning, give me my marching orders and I'll go take, for, take you uh, something. I'll go take the area for the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. I talked too long. Can't talk anymore. Let's go. Let's baptize these folks. Turn the lights on. That's all right. They'll be all right. It's kids. Amen. Oh, huh. don't encourage that behavior. Hallelujah. Okay, this is a this is a big deal. And I didn't know Isabella was too. Says Bethany. Well, I thought Bethany was. Oh. Amen. I love you. Father, I claim the word of the Lord over her. I thank you, Father God, she's a prophetess. I thank you, Father God, that she walks in the anointing. She hears your voice early, as Samuel did, Father God. She will walk in, in the order of the Most High God. I thank you, Father. I praise you for all that you're going and walking through. It's preparing you for all that is to come. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. (laughs) 
She got her hair did yesterday for prom. So we don't want to get it messed up. Amen? Just let her breathe. Don't put it over the whole face. You're so pretty. <laughs> well, I have to say this is the first. <laughs> There may be a little bit seep in, but you grab it back here and we'll we'll do the rest. Hallelujah. You've truly been purged by fire, my daughter. The journey has just begun. You're going to have to lay down your life in some other areas, and God is expecting more and more of you. The thing is, is that he's going to take you to places and send you to places that the religious folks are going to say, no, and that's not God, and that's not the way it is. But the Lord says, it is my way. You do hear my voice, and you will do what I tell you to do, and you will follow my instructions. And the places that I take you, you will deliver people, and you will, ha- will set them free with the gospel. You will bring forth my word in a mighty way. Anointing will be in your hands, and anointing will be on the dance. And the Lord shall deliver many through what you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You ready? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, drowning her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. more he's he's demanding more of you more and more is going to have to be cut away don't be in condemnation i'm not rebuking you right now but where he's taking you and because of the leadership that he's placed on you you're set apart and you can't do what others do and you fight and fight and fight trying to fit in but you will never fit in my daughter you will never fit in with them i have anointed you and set you apart to lead them out to lead them out to lead them out You have a Moses anointing to lead them out. You shall lead them out. So let the fire come. Let him purge you completely and equip you to do all that he's called you to do. You know the things that he's dealing with you on. No one has to condemn you. No one has to judge you. But you also know where he's calling you. And you also know the importance of what he's calling you to. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this daughter. I thank you, Father God, for this child. And I thank you, Father God, for all that she has been through and all the fires that she's been through, Father God, preparing her for such a time as this, for the end time harvest, Father God, to lead, Father God, those that are lost, to think that perversion is okay, to think that uh, a homosexuality is okay, to think, Father God, sin is okay, that, to, that mocks, Father God, what you do, to teach them, Father God, the ways of the Lord. I thank you for this anointing that you placed on them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, today was your day. Those that were unable to 
to have the stamina to finish. Father, we pray for them that they will be empowered, that your ways are magnificent. And if we'll stay till you're finished, we'll reap the rewards, Father. Now, Father, I thank you all that you've done in this house today. I thank you for what you've done to our hearts. Now, Father, let this fire grow. Let this fire grow, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Love on somebody. Tell them you're glad they were here today. Tell them you'll see them Wednesday. Go spread the gospel in Jesus' name.